and hello everyone and first and foremost thank you for joining me in this talk today just to level set uh, this talk is about choosing apache airflow over other proprietary tools for your data orchestration needs i hope by the end of this talk you would be able to understand how apache airflow compares with some of the tools along with some in-depth understanding of the capabilities of each this comparative analysis should help you in your decision making process whether you are planning to migrate an existing system or evaluating your first enterprise data orchestration platform. Let me tell you briefly about myself. I am Parnak Pasak, as Pedro mentioned, and I am a solutions architect working for Amazon Web Services for our worldwide public sector customers. I also double up as a specialist SME for Amazon Managed Workflow for Apache Airflow, AWS is managed orchestration service for Apache Airflow, helping our customers effectively adopt the service. On a personal front, I love watching movies and the recent pandemic double up my personal expenses on streaming services, which I certainly admit is a losing investment of my money and would not advise anyone to partake. But I have a packed agenda today as I talk briefly on what data orchestration is, what tools do you have available in the market today to do data orchestration? And trust me, when I say this, that there are many. I pick four among them, including Apache Airflow for comparison. I contrast their similarities, their dissimilarities, which are categorized as some basic and advanced features and some unique features of Apache Airflow. I hope you see the benefits of Apache Airflow by the time. So I would conclude with getting started and migration guides. And certainly, as Pedro mentioned, I would leave time at the end to ask me any questions on this topic, but feel free to post your questions via the Ask a Question link as we go along. With that, let's get started. Fundamentally, we are trying to solve the problem of finding an effective tool for data orchestration. Now, data orchestration is defined as a process of taking siloed data from multiple data storage locations, combining and organizing it, and making it available for data analysis tools. It can also include tasks like provisioning resources and monitoring. At the end of the day, we are building a data pipeline or a coordinate workflow or an orchestrated set of jobs. Do note that these are more than just scripts that are scheduled by your favorite cron tab type OS schedulers. However, finding the right tool to do data orchestration is still an arduous job since your organization might have different personas who have different sets of requirements from the tool. The priority for the business team from the tool is that it should be available, reliable, and yet be cost-effective. It should be simple to use so that it can be democratized to all. When it comes to the developer who is using the tool to build the workflow, it should be testable, programmable, and extensible. It should support CI-CD processes as well as provide integration support to different data sources besides being well documented. The operations team will then have a different perspective. They want the tool to support easy administration, infrastructure as code, reporting, alerting, and all those good things. It should also be scalable and have HA. DR should come right out of the box. Lastly, the security persona in your team is probably looking at compliance, role-based access control, security of data in rest and in motion, and being able to audit it at regular intervals. Talking about the available orchestration tools in the market, the first category are the proprietary tools. These tools require licenses from a vendor to install on a different number of machines. Source codes of these are not publicly available. Customizations may come at an extra cost. And the providing vendor provides specialized technical support, especially for enterprise clients. And hence, there's always a reliance on the vendor to continue to improve the product. There are a lot of such products available in the market. The prime, one among, the prime ones among them being Autosys from Broadcom, Control M from BMC, Stone Branch, Champs by Help Systems, Perfect, Tidal, Ansible, or Active Batch. On the opposite side, you have open source software tools. These tools are free to try, use, modify, or redistribute as a free community forum that offers support are based on open standards that increase transparency. There is no vendor lock-in or no IP restrictions. And can be, this can be easily scaled and extended if you have the need for it. There are, again, a few publicly available today under different GitHub repositories 
like Apache Airflow, Spotify's Luigi, Azkaban, Uzi, Quartz, etc. In my comparison today, I have picked Broadcom Autosys and BMC Control M from the proprietary tool sets and Apache Airflow and Spotify's Luigi from the open source tool list. With that, let's get to the meat of our talk and compare Apache Airflow, Broadcom Autosys, BMC Control M and Spotify's Luigi. Let me give you some history to start with to understand the evolutions of these tools. So Apache Airflow was started in October 2014 by Maxim Buchanan at Airbnb. It was open source from the very first comet and officially brought under the Airbnb GitHub repository and announced in June 2015. It joined the Apache software's incubator program in March 2016. When it comes to Broadcom Autosys, this was first developed by William Arnst and Walter Goodwin, who created Autosystems Limited. This was sold to Platinum Technology International in 1995 and Computer Associates bought Platinum Technology International in 1999. And finally, Broadcom acquired Computer Associates in 2018, and the tool is today known as Autosys Workload Automation. For Control-M, this was originally developed, by, developed for scheduling jobs for on mainframe computer systems by an Israeli-based company called New Dimension Software. BMC acquired New Dimension Software in 1999, and in in December 2020, they released BMC Helix Control Amp, which is a SaaS solution version. When it comes to Spotify's Luigi, this was primarily created by Eric Bernhansen and Elias Frieder from the Spotify team. The initial commit to GitHub was in 2011. This was open source in 2012, and the Spotify's data team currently maintains Luigi. Before we talk about the differences, there are a lot of similarities that all of these tools offer. Let's understand those first. First and foremost, all of these tools can be run on both on-premises and in the cloud. All of them also do support robust integrations to multiple databases, data warehouses, data lakes, big data systems, third-party tools for your source and destination data. Secondly, all of these tools allows you to configure it based on your security and compliance needs, meaning you can configure role-based access controls, single sign-ons, high availability DR, etc. Thirdly, all of these tools offer rich UI, REST API, and CLIs to interact with, except probably Luigi, which does not have a REST API support yet. The UI allows multiple types of views for your job runs, for example, dependency graphs, audit trails, historical runs, etc. Finally, the job definitions for all of these tools are also robust, allows defining dynamic jobs, allows you to do grouping of jobs, and retrying jobs if they have to fail. Let's first quickly talk about the underlying architecture to, of each to get a better understanding of how they are built. Let's start with Apache Airflow first. In Apache Airflow, the user interacts with the user interface, which sits on top of a web server. The user authors DAGs, which stands for Directed Exit Graphs in, that are written in Python and puts them into the DAG directory. The scheduler parses the files from this DAG directory inserts metadata about the workflows to a database, which can be configured in PostgreSQL, MySQL, or Microsoft SQL Server. The executor is responsible for handling the running tasks and uses a task queue to queue task. You can also define multiple schedulers too for high availability needs. Finally, an auto, -scale, auto set of auto-scaling workers pull the task queue and execute those tasks in. Let's understand the architecture of Autosys next. So in case of Autosys, the user interacts with the Autosys server, which you have to install on a Unix, Linux, or a Windows machine. This Autosys server comprises of a scheduler, an event server, which you can configure using Oracle, Sybase, or Microsoft SQL Server, a web server, which is hosted within Apache Tomcat, and then an application server. For interacting with the target machines and running jobs in them, you have to install a system agent on your target machines, and this system agent pulls for jobs from the scheduler and then executes them on the machine itself as individual jobs. You can also configure the client SD the CLI on your machines to be able to interact with the Autosys server, which goes via the application server. There are additional set of components that you can also install with Autosys. For example, I've highlighted just a few out of many that are possible. For example, Embedded Entitles Switch Manager is responsible for role-based access control. The Workload Control Center is responsible for interactions with your applications, with interactions with the Autosys server, and the i-automatic 
automation intelligence server is responsible for generating some advanced capabilities like reports. When it comes to the control M architecture, the user interacts with the control M client, which can be hosted on a web, mobile, or a desktop application. That control M client interacts with the enterprise manager. The enterprise manager has its own database called the enterprise manager database, which is configured using PostgreSQL. It also has a graphical user interface and a gateway component attached to it. The enterprise manager interacts with the control M server, which is the core of the control M um, server instance there. And it has its own database called the server database, which you can also configure using PostgreSQL. It also has a gateway interface for API or CLI calls. If you have the need of running Control M for mainframe systems, you can also configure the Control M for ZOS to be able to uh, run Autosys on, to be able to run Control M on your mainframe applications. For interacting with the client agents, you have to install the Control M agents on your target machines, and you have to also install the application plugins to be able to interact with your data sources, data stores, or your compute systems using these plugins. There's also an agentless remote host that interacts with the control M agents and which further communicates back to the control M server. Lastly, let's talk about the Luigi architecture. In Luigi, the user interacts by using the CLI, since remember I mentioned that it doesn't have a REST API support yet, using a task tree sets of workers, and each of these workers register the tasks to the central scheduler. And do note, this central scheduler is responsible for distributing tasks to the workers and not for the scheduling piece. So whenever there is a next job to be scheduled, it, pull, it invokes the a set of tasks, a set of ta creates a set of task tree workers, which are pulled by the workers itself, which can be also be configured using auto scaling groups. And then these evolve, uh, this sp spin up more instances of it. And what it does, it internally downloads the software and images and then it analyzes the tasks, uh, which, and finally reads and writes back to the input and output targets. You can also configure an optional database, and this can be any database as long as it supports the SQL Alchemy engine. There's also a Visual component that you can interact that you can install along with uh, in Luigi, and uh, the user interacts with the visualizer to be able to see DAG runs, your workflow runs, your histories, or the uh, and as well as the dependency graph. Do note that triggering or scheduling of jobs is not part of the core architecture of Luigi. You have to use an external trigger like cron tab to trigger your workflow workflows periodically. Having understood the architecture, let's talk about differences next. So let's first talk how would you install each of these. I've kind of hinted on this during the architectural review earlier. So here is a summary. So in case of Apache Airflow, these are essentially agentless. So you install Apache Airflow by running the pip install Apache Airflow with a specified set of version because there are so many versions available for Apache Airflow. And then for connecting to your data sources, data stores, com other compute instances, you use Airflow connections, hooks, or operators. And these two come as a part of the core packaging or as a part of the community provided packages. When it comes to Broadcom Autosys, these are agent based, meaning you have to install an agent on your target machines. For example, you would install the workload automation agent for Unix if you're running on a Unix. And then you have to also install the agent plugins to con to interact with your target systems. For example, you would install the database agent plugin to connect to multiple database types. When it comes to PMC Control M, like Autosys, it is agent based too. It involves installing a server agent and the clients along with some application plugins and add-ons as I was describing in the architecture review section. Finally, with Spotify's Luigi, again, this is agentless like Apache Airflow. You can run Luigi by or you can install EU Luigi by executing a pip install Luigi command. And for connecting to your databases, you actually have to create those physical connections in Python and then use those. Let's discuss differences next in the light of some basic features that you expect from all of these tools. So first among them being how you can define your tasks or jobs in each. When it comes to Apache Airflow, uh, you essentially write 
a directed acyclic graph or DAG, which is programmable only in which is programmable Python file. It has a set of constructs defined within it. The first of them being the default arguments, which defines the which defines the constructor. You can also if you, can, you have to define the ID and as well as provide the schedule of it if you are running on a schedule. And then you have the operators or tasks within which you are actually writing the core logic as to what you want to do within your DAG files. And finally, in order to tie them all together, and you would define the upstream and down and downstream dependencies, which defines the order of executing these tasks. In Autosys, you configure the jobs, you can configure the jobs via the UI too. And once you configure the jobs, you can export them in a language called job information language or gel files. Now, essentially, if you look at gel files, gel files is essentially a flat file, again, which has a set of constructs, for example, the job type, what command you want to run, which machine you want to run this in, who would be the owner of the execution, some scheduling conditions and additional conditions. For example, what happens if there's a failure when the jump? Should it raise an alarm or should it, uh, should it notify another system for it? For control M, you can also use the UI to configure your jobs and the jobs are stored internally in JSON and XML files. Again, if you look at this construct for the job definition, there are certain sub pieces to it. First and foremost, the defaults section allows you to define what are the parameters that you are going to use. The job when section allows you to define the scheduling criteria. You define your specific for specific code within your tasks or within the job files. And finally, you define the flow, which defines the order or dependencies between those jobs. In Spotify's Luigi, like Apache Airflow, it is again programmable via Python. You essentially create a Luigi task, which is a class, which is a Python class, which contains the following methods. You can define the parameters, which are the parameters for the, that the task would need. Then you would define the requires method, which defines the task dependencies. Then you define the logic for execution within the run method. You can also define the artifacts that are generated within the output method. And finally, you can also define the input method to provide you to provide any inputs that your task might need. So if you look all of this in together, both Autosys and Control M allows you to use the UI to easily configure your jobs and schedules while you have to perform them using your favorite IDE in Airflow and Luigi and then export them over to the respective systems and tools. Next is calendar because calendars help you schedule jobs as follows. You, want to, my, what, you might want to run a job on a certain fixed dates. You might want to exclude certain dates such as holidays from a job's regular run schedule or you might want to run a job based on some complex scheduling criteria. To that effect, Apache Airflow gives you the cron expression. It also gives you the time deltas, which uh, allows you to wait for a time delta after which a runs data date interval by using the time delta sensor. You can also use Airflow timetables, which by which you can create custom schedules using the plugins in Python. For Broadcom Autosys, there are three types of calendars that are available. The first is the standard calendar, which allows you to list the fixed dates. Then there's a cyclic calendar, which allows you to define your periods. Then there's an extended calendar, which specifies complex criteria to generate a schedule based on some logic. Similar is, similar is the case with BMC Control M2. Again, it, that also provides three types of calendars right out of the box. First one being the regular calendar, which specifies the dates, such as days of the month, days of the week, in a selected year, holidays, et cetera. Then there's a periodic calendar, uh, so which, which has a different calendar periods other than months and days. For example, you want to run a job in each quarter. And then finally, there's a rule-based calendar, which allows you to specify the complex rules. For example, I want to run my job three days before the end of the month. Within Spotify's Luigi, there is no native concept of scheduling. Uh, if you remember my architectural discussion on Luigi, I kind of hinted to it as well. So Luigi does not include its own triggering mechanism. So you have to rely on external schedulers, such as CronTab, to actually trigger the workflows. So both Autosys and Control M include some complex scheduling capacity right out of the box, which you might have to custom code in Airflow or externally built in Luigi. 
The next is file systems requirement, file system events, because a common requirement is is a file based trigger and then some and then do something within it. To that effect, Apache Airflow has a file sensor which waits for a file or a folder to land in a file sense in a file system and then uh, trigger trigger a DAG. If you're running on on the cloud, you have multiple sensors there as well. For example, if you're running on AWS, you can use the S3 key sensor. If you're running on Azure, you can use the WASB blob sensor, or if you're running on GCP, you can use a GCS object acquisition sensor. Within Broadcom Autosys, you can define file watcher or file trigger jobs for file system events. So you can define a file trigger job to monitor when a file is created, updated, deleted, expanded, or shrunk and when a file exists or does not exist. It can also detect when a file has reached a minimum size within a polling interval. Within Control M, you can use the file watcher or the CTMFW utility. It can detect when a file is created or deleted. When the file is detected, the job continues to monitor the size of the file. When the file has reached a specified minimum size and does not increase in size for again a specified period of time, the file watcher utility can execute a specified two action. Within Spotify's Luigi, there is nothing natively available. So you have to trigger your workflows externally based on some file events that you have to capture and then pass it over to Luigi. So Autosys and Control M comes with some added features to watch files based on sizes and then be able to trigger downstream jobs. Being able to send alerts on critical events is crucial too. So within Autosys, oh sorry, within Apache Airflow, you can use the notifications module. You can configure the email on failure attribute to true within the default arguments or within the base operator as well. And then you can define the list of email IDs you want to send out notifications out to. You can also define the custom notifications within the DAG or a task level. For that, Apache Airflow provides you with two sets of callback methods. So on failure callback and on success callback. If you're wanting to integrate with your integrate with Slack, you can also use the Slack webhook operator as well. For a Broadcom process, you have to set the send underscore notification attribute to Y. You can also specify the notification template, which will be used to send out notifications to. You can define the notification email address and when to send out the notification uh, email emails out to, for example, notification email address on successes or notification email addresses on the job being terminated. Within Control M, notif notifications are called shouts for jobs. So you end up sending shouts. You can send out shouts on job status changes, for example, running, failed, before a job ends, after a job ends, et cetera, statuses. You can also define the destinations. The destinations would mean where to send out those shouts out to, and you can define whether it would be email, whether it would be SMS, or even posting the posting or making a log entry into a specified log file. BMC Control M also allows you to shout, generate shouts on anomalies too. For example, delays in a job being executed uh, because of certain other reasons or even the upstream dependencies being not being met. Within Spotify's Luigi, you can use the Luigi notification module. So you can define uh, who the receiver would be. You can define when to send out those uh, when to send out those emails to for example send notifications or email value and as well as the protocol whether you're using smtp or others and if you're running on aws you can even define send email using the ses or the sns services that are proprietary to aws so if you look at all this Autosys and Control M has some advanced capabilities to alert users based on anomalies in your most critical job streams. Next, I bring you some advanced features that these tools also offer. So first and foremost of them being auto scaling because auto scaling gives you the ability to process multiple tasks in parallel. In Apache Airflow, we have a few concepts there. The so first and foremost of those concepts being parallelism. So this is the maximum number of tasks that can run concurrently at the system level. And then there is concurrency, which is the maximum number of task instances allowed to run concurrently in each DAG and is configurable at the DAG level with the max active tasks parameter. If you're running in the cloud as a managed service like Amazon 
manage workflow for Apache Airflow or MWA in AWS, you can set the minimum and the maximum worker count to limit the capacity as well. Within Plotcom Autosys, you can define those agents uh, within containers too and rely on the inherent container scaling. You can auto scale the tasks using containers. And as you auto scale or downscale, it auto registers or unregisters those agent containers from the Autosys server as well. Similarly is the case with BMC Control M as, again, as well. Since it's an agent based, you can run those agents in containers and use and auto scale those tasks within those containers to register and un unregister agents from the central Autosys server. When it comes to Spotify's Luigi, the workers do auto scale, and this is already handled inherently by uh, the central scheduler. So based on pending task counts, uh, as determined the central scheduler, uh, the Luigi workers are scaled up or scaled down. So auto scaling comes right out of the box for both Airflow and Luigi. Well, you can do the same with auto system control M if you're running the, those agents in containers. We sometimes need to assign job priorities to segregate critical jobs from those that are not critical and to ensure jobs with high priority are given preferences during execution. The queue priority establishes the relative priority of all jobs queued for a given machine and the jobs with higher priority are picked up first. So in Apache Airflow, you have the concept of pools in a priority weights parameter. So pools are meant to control parallelism for task instances. There by default, there are 128 slots for the default pool that is available. And then you can assign priority weights as well. Again, a priority weight for a task are given as any arbitrary integers with the default being one. And the higher the value that this integer is, the higher the priority in the executor's queue and are picked up earlier. In Broadcom Autosys, you also have the priority attribute. You can set the define the priority levels for each of your jobs. And uh, completely opposite to Airflow, the lower the value here, the higher the priority. So zero signifies the job to run immediately, regardless of the current machine's load. And it starts with the default being zero. You can also use a send event change priority Q priority command to be able to dynamically change a job's priority as it is executing. Within BMC control M, you have, the, you have the priority star property and within the priority, you can set priority levels and there are five available priority levels, critical, high, normal, low and lowest. And the default value for uh, the priority star property is normal. If you have to change a priority of a job, then you have to pause the running job, update the priority and resume them back again. When it comes to Spotify's Luigi, it has also a priority attribute and it mimics like a patch airflow. So higher the value uh, gets higher priority in the executor queue. But there's one more difference there. There's no predefined range of priorities that you can choose. You can choose either integer or float values and the default value is zero while the default value for Apache Airflow was one. So only Autosys allows you to do, allows you to dynamically change a job's priority while the job is running. For the other tools, you have to stop or pause the job and then resume them back again to reflect the change priority. Next is SLA because SLA allows you to ensure jobs start and finish successfully by a particular date or time. So within Apache Airflow, you can define a callback method to define your SLAs. And you can pass this in the SLA underscore miss callback as a method. You can also define the SLAs as a, at a task or, a, or the DAG level. For example, here I have defined the SLA to be of five seconds and monitor the SLA misses through the Apache Airflow UI. Within Autosys, you have to install a separate web-based solution called the CA Workload Automation IDAS SLAs. It can generate SLAs for deadlines that are at risk of being missed, are predicted to be missed, or even have missed already. And you can also execute automated recovery actions in response to these alerts as well. Within BMC Control M, you have the Patch Impact Manager, which is again a separate utility that you need to be that you need to install. And this can also alert on your potential delays. You can definitely set the deadline to finish, should be completed by since start, and as well as the notification action to in response to within the batch impact manager. 
You can also analyze why there was a delay by filtering on the critical path using the analysis viewpoint option in case your job has already run and there was a delay. Within Spotify's Luigi, there is no SLA management that comes right out of the box. However, you can always build your own using Python within Luigi. So both Autosys and Control-M allows you to do predictive analytics and also provides statistics-based early warnings for your future runs, and as well as helping you with your SLA management as well. Next is forecast reports. So forecast reports allows you to predict the impact of changes in the batch environment. For example, on what future date will a job be scheduled and which scheduled jobs will be affected by a four hour shutdown of my machine. Within Apache Airflow, there are only insights provided for your past runs. So you can use multiple views with, through the Apache Airflow UI, that being the calendar view, the Gantt chart view, and the task duration view. And there are different purposes for all of these views. Within Autosys, you can use the forecast reports to display information about and predict about your existing workflows. This forecast reports help you identify problems with the predicted workflow to resolve them before they occur or to plan changes in the workflow. For Control M, you have to again install an add-on component called the forecast. It essentially displays the visual calendar that displays all the dates on which the job job will be scheduled and it also gives you the estimate time execution window for each and every job you can also do some trend analysis displayed as a histogram within the within the forecast reports option within control m for spotify's luigi there's nothing that comes out of the box for forecast reporting it only gives you the option through the luigi visualizer to show information about past runs for example you can view the status the priority the time etc Luigi tasks status are shown as a dependency graph within the Luigi UI too. So both Control M and Autosys allows you to do critical path analysis of any job streams, including computation of several different types of delays that could happen to your workflows. Both of these also allows you to do prediction in real time if critical jobs will finish or meet their expected finish times. The last difference is the ability to do source code versioning of the job definition files. So to that, Apache Airflow has no built-in support for source control management and code deployment. However, you're free to use your own source control management tools like GitHub, Bitbucket, AWS Code Commit, et cetera, for your DAG code versioning. You can also use your favorite code deployment tools like Jenkins, CircleCI, GitHub Actions in order to deploy your DAGs which would essentially mean copying them over to the airflow underscore home slash tax directory. This is also the same case with Autosys and Luigi 2. There is no built-in support, which means you can use your favorite source control management tools like GitHub Bitbucket code commit or for your Jill definition file versioning for Autosys, or you can use your favorite code deployment tools like Jenkins circle CR GitHub actions for executing the CLI commands to update those shell files in. Similar is the case with Luigi 2. You can use your own sets of source control management tools and code deployment tools. However, Control M differs a bit from the rest here. So it has a built-in check-in and check-out management feature inbuilt within the PMC Control M. So it, it is able to display changes between your job versions, it restores a previous job version as well, it even restores a deleted job and it allows you to do audit reporting, meaning when a user has changed the job, who has changed it, when he has changed it, and all those sorts of audit details. You can also configure the workload change manager within Control M. So this allows you to do change management and deployment of workflows to multiple environments, for example, to approve changes and move them across deployments from your dev to UAT, UAT to production, and so on and so forth. When it comes to Apache Airflow, there are a few features that make it stand out from the rest, and I'll list a few of them out of many. So first and foremost, Apache Airflow is extensible, so you can define your own sets of operators, executors, and extend the library so that it fits the level of abstraction that suits your environment. You can also run 
Apache Airflow locally. So you can bootstrap an Airflow standalone instance in your local machine using the Airflow standalone command and also run it in a container with Docker installed. Apache Airflow gives you the catch up and backfill option. So catch up allows you to run the DAG at every schedule from a past date till today. And backfill allows you to run the DAG at a specified date in the past. However, Control M and has a retro option and Luigi has a backfilling tasks options that do somewhat mimic that same behavior as catch up and backfill in Apache Airflow. The executors are pluggable, meaning you can swap the executors in Apache Airflow. For example, it comes with a few sets of executors, for example, the local and the remote executors, and a few examples of the remote executors are Celery and Kubernetes. You can also include your own custom schedule executors if you have the need for and swap out the underlying scheduler there. Apache Airflow comes with the deferable operators and triggers. A deferable operator is one that is written with the ability to suspend itself and free up the workers when it knows it has to wait. For example, for a file arrival, thereby minimizing resource wastages and is recommended to, to be used as a best practice in case you have the scenarios. You can also unit test the code uh, within Apache Airflow before you deploy them as well. There are multiple test runners available for Python, including unit test, PyTest and NOS2. The open source Airflow project uses PyTest for DAG validation testing, unit testing, mocking, data integration testing, etc. Because Luigi is also Python, you probably can also run the same set of tools for your unit tests as well within Luigi. Next is the ability to include custom secrets backend with Apache Airflow. If you have the need to store sensitive data, for example, the user, user and passwords of your other connected machines or systems, you can integrate them with your own secrets backend and that uh, Apache Airflow very seamlessly allows you to do that as well. Next is lineage support. Although lineage support is currently very expand, experimental, Airflow can help you track origins of data that happens to it and where it moves over time. So Airflow tracks data by means of inlets and outlets of the tasks. You can also integrate Apache Airflow with Open Lineage, which is an open framework for data lineage collection and analysis. Lastly, you can use templates within Apache Airflow. So templates and macros in Apache Airflow are the way to pass dynamic data to your tags at runtime. And Airflow uses the gym Jinja templating, a templating framework in Python, free out of the box. Now that you've seen the advantage of using Apache Airflow, you might be asking, Parnab, how do I get started using it? And my answer would be, that would depend on where you want to run. In an on-premises environment, you can either build, a, build all your software from sources, including the GitHub repo, and then running it, you can also download the packages from PyPy, which is Python's package index, and then run using pip. If you're familiar with Docker, you can also run the production container images in Docker or Kubernetes. However, for both these options, you have to self-manage the infrastructure, but you can very easily customize it if needed. You can also achieve some runtime isolation as well. If you're planning to operate in the cloud, the choice will depend on your selected cloud provider. For example, we at AWS offer Amazon Managed Workflow for Apache Airflow, which is a managed orchestration service for Apache Airflow that makes it easier to set up and operate end-to-end -end data pipelines in the cloud at scale. If you're running on Google Cloud, you can use the Google Cloud Composer, a fully managed workflow orchestration service built on Apache Airflow. Or you can also use Astronomer, a fully managed Apache Airflow service that runs on any cloud and even on on-premises too. Or you can use Qball as well, which provides Apache Airflow as a managed service that is easy to manage and scalable for your data engineering needs. Note that all of these managed services offer automatic setup of the whole infrastructure, auto-scaling of the workers, built-in security, additional matrices, and a pay-as-you-go cost structure. If you're already using any of the proprietary tools, I also help suggest a migration path. Check your autosys and control M components and create a file parser that would take the job definition files and as inputs and convert them to tags. 
This file parser can read the mappings from an external module uh, to convert the constructs to appropriate Airflow tasks, schedules, timetables, or plugins, or tags. For Luigi, since the definition is already in Python, you can probably rewrite by reusing much of the code to Airflow. Of course, you have to also create some additional connections to your data sources, file stores, or compute servers in Airflow by using the Apache Airflow UI, API, or the CLI. So in summary, use a data orchestration tool to easily build, define, schedule, manage, and monitor production workflows, ensuring visibility, reliability, and improving SLAs. Use Apache Airflow for programmatically authoring, scheduling, and monitoring workflows. It is easy to use, scalable, dynamic, extensible, and elegant. It is open source, so no punitive licensing fee, and you can customize it based on your own needs as well. It provides robust integrations to current infrastructure and allows you to extend to next-gen technologies. It has a comparable sets of features and perhaps more than proprietary tools. And then use a managed service of Apache Airflow to focus on authoring, scheduling, monitoring your workflows as opposed to provisioning resources. Lastly, if you're using a proprietary tool, and think about refactoring or re-architecting to improve operating costs, agility, performance, and scalability. I just barely scratched the capabilities of each of these tools, but to know more, check out the documentation for all of these tools in the respective links here. Thank you for your time today, and don't forget to listen into the other talk, interesting talks that are happening in the summit this week. With that, I will open up the floor for any questions that you may have on this topic, but if you have any additional questions later, feel free to reach me out by my LinkedIn profile as shared here.